the law of the Spirit of life in the Messiah Jesus released you from the law of sin and death. And exactly as in the end of Romans 3, I think Paul is deliberately playing with the idea of law, the law which is God's holy and just and good law, which has been taken over by sin so that it can be spoken of as the law of sin and death. That same holy and just and good law is strangely fulfilled in the death of the Messiah and in the gift of the Spirit. So the law of the Spirit of life in the Messiah Jesus has released you from the law of sin and death. Notice the link of life here. In chapter 7, verse 10, he says, the commandment which pointed to life turned out, in my case, to bring death. That is what the commandment wanted to do. If you look at the end of Deuteronomy, or for that matter, at the end of Joshua, you see, here is the choice, either death or life. Therefore, choose life that you may live. The whole of the law is saying, there is such a thing as life. Please choose it. But the story of Adam and Eve, which starts off the whole Torah, says, yes, there was that choice, and they chose death, and so all those who are in them have chosen death as well. But now, the law of the spirit of life, the Torah which says, this is what I wanted to do, and I'm now doing it through the spirit, this is the thing that has set you free from the law of sin and death. Do you see how then Paul's exposition of justification, once we see it as future as well as present, expands to include that whole picture of the transformed character, which is being worked out by the gospel through the Spirit.